All right, all right. So this is Larry, TJR Sim, looking at some Logitech Pro track wheel and the button box, the Xbox series that is. I actually received the uh, wheel here uh, last week that are interested in this. I did hear on some some reviewers that it looked like a, uh, I don't know, like a yoke, right? But actually, if you look here, it is identical to a Cube Pro rim here. So almost identical. There's a little bit of overlap here on the sides here. But generally the shape, like especially the top part of the shape, is is really close to it. So if you like the Q Pro Zero, you might like this one as well. Obviously, the Q Pro Zero is a, is a lot more advanced. It's got some more curvatures here, more comfortable, thicker, and all that as well. But here's a quick release. You did see my video on that that I have for the Pro, Logitech Pro. But just you know, looking at this wheel, how I like it or, or don't like it is, is uh, this is my thoughts on this, right? So it's plastic tops, all aluminum design here. These are cut out, of course, to fit on your gear, as you can see here. And uh, it's nice, classy looking. I always say the Logitechs look kind of handsome, right? So it's kind of nice, classy, handsome look to it. Just a G logo on here. And then, of course, you etched uh, holes here to put your buttons and stuff through here. This is a rubber grip. Nothing fancy here. It's not like this Alcantara where it feels nice and plush. And even with this Alcantara being so worn down, this still feels nicer in the hand than this one does, right? So, but gets the job done. I think it was like 70 bucks for these. So they're not too expensive at all. Super light. So shouldn't add any, hardly any rotational mass uh, to your rim uh, or to your wheel box. Your wheel box would be the heaviest portion of this. So nice, actually. I, I think it's pretty nice. It, it's not. High end, it's it's kind of more a mid tier to a low end wheel, but it is a nice aluminum structure, so that is is nice. When I say low to mid tiers, because it doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles to it, it's just a rubber a rubber hand, not leather or anything on here, which that would have stepped it up to at least a mid tier level. But since it's just rubber, it's pretty pretty basic wheel, right? So anyway, that's the rim, like it or not, it's what we got from them. Here is the hub, of course, as you can see, recent series, all the goodness on it here. And I already slid it open to make it easier. But I left the unboxing for us here on the camera. So it comes with the tools here, maybe some stickers, it looks like. And of course, how to connect it. Up. I think we all know how to do that. Set that outside, warranty stuff. And then, what is this? Let's see what this is real quick here. I mean, just to tease you. All right, so here's the toolkit here. So you got some, uh, some Allen heads here as well. These are Allen heads as well, because it's uh, curved on the, I don't know if you can see this in my hand, but curved on the ends there to make it a little easier to slide it into the bolt. At least on that one, this one's not, it's straight edged there. So the, man, you got some stickers here, so that's nice. Like uh, some magic here where you got some stickers, one, two, three, you can label your, your stickers with different colors. Now these are just only, well, it looks like it's labeling, of course, the numbers, right? What buttons they are. But you also do have ABS, plus or minus, braking, DRS, ignition, NOS. <laughs> so uh, a little variety here. Of course, in green. I think black's probably easier to see on the camera. This is gray, actually. Gray here. Uh, so it's kind of nice. It's a nice touch there. I did, did a little bit of homework of thinking here about this and what people may want on there. And so you don't have to... I appreciate this, actually. You don't have to go and find custom stickers or make your own, which I don't have a, a, a sticker maker, but this is a nice addition there. So, got that out of the way. And these, of course, oops, these are your nuts that you have here for your rim as well, which we'll assemble it here in a second. All right. Grand finale. Nice uh, recyclable paper here. So here it is. Here's the rim, or the button box, rather. A twist and knob there, so it's just a, a four-way left, right, up, down, not pushed, pushed in, so just like the stock one is. Doesn't twist either. LED light there. These are push-in buttons as well. You will notice from uh, the actual stock round rim where this was on top, which I'll show you. So the round rim here for comparison here, you got the twisting button here on top, and of course, paddle shifters as well, and this one on the side. For here, it's just all on the side. So I actually kind of like that comparison here. Oops, the camera. Too bad. What they sound like? So you have smaller paddle shifters than what you would see on that stock one here. Pair them here. A little bit, well, this is a better comparison. Quite a bit smaller in size. Clicking sound, about the same. A little bit louder. Doesn't look like there's any rubber stops in there on the insides. Just pure magnetic. Now these are adjustable. 
uh, out. It's, obviously, these are all the way out, but it is cut within there, so you can push them in. Or you can remove them completely if you don't want to have them. The normal quick release here as well. And uh, that's pretty much it. You got the, of course, you know, the tape here off. Sound test for the lead. The fancy sounder on that, just regular old tape. That is to protect the actual bulger, I guess, or the surface here. So, see what it looks like. Setting it on there. Oh, it looks nice. Pretty keen, pretty nice, pretty nice. Very tight uh, tolerances here. No extra wiggle, just a hair wiggle there. But the tolerances are really good on this. This is really good. Nice. Now, you may notice I got it for the Xbox. You can get it. These were on back order, even though I ordered it the day that it went on sale. They showed in stock, but then it still took a few weeks to get it. So they were back ordered for me. Whereas my shifter was back ordered when I ordered it, but I got it first. So go figure. Anyway, let's put this thing together. Good size here. Those, of course, they had some Loctite on them as well initially, which is nice. Screwing it now, you don't have to over screw it just till you get it there. Recess in there. I don't want to strip it. It's actually kind of snug to get on here. All right. Easy peasy, lemon squeezies. Nice and flush in there. Looking good. Let's see what this feels like. Oh, yeah, that's nice. That feels, it's pretty light too, actually. Really light. I don't have a gram scale here with me, but definitely the round rim is a lot. A little bit heavier than the cord. Not a lot, but a little bit heavier. This feels good. Nice. You're going to enjoy this. I prefer the GT style rim a lot better than than a round rim. Also have your, your RPM gauge up here, RPM LED light here as well. And we should have a couple screws that go on the back side here, right there and right there. We'll slide those in too. And then here at the bottom as well. Probably have to use their big deep small one there for that. I'll have one handy for me. Look at that, just enough room to get in there to get that screw. That's good. I like that they give you enough room in here to get Get it being that they have this little swivel or little rounded heads on the Allen head makes it a little bit easier that you can screw this in. And these aren't that very really torquing these down. Very nice and sturdy here as far as the wheel goes. I like it. Let's put it up on the rig and play. That is the first look. I'll put it on the rig here and continue on with this. All right, so cranking it up or putting it onto the wheelbase here. This is this is cool to see. You will notice you've got Xbox. Uh, PS5, PS4, and PC now. That is pretty cool. So I was just wondering how I was going to register that, though. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to do uh, PC for now. Look it in. And it does its centering. Nice. So uh, as far as how it goes here, if you're curious on how these actually look, this is what it, of course, looks like on there, right? And if I was to switch off, I'm curious if this wheel would turn off. Unhook it, but as far as clicking it in, yep, it does turn off the unit. You will notice here that there isn't a key. So on the stock one, there's a key there. Uh, so you can line it up with the with the uh, keyway right here, right? So the keyway here, and then here's the key for the keyway. So you can easily just line it up and then stick it on, right? And then it just clicks on automatically, uh, the stock one, and easily, of course, switches off. This one with the hub, all it has is a arrow comes in to be there but there's a little arrow right there at the top and that's to indicate where it is at top right but obviously you, you know what top is right but you're going to want to center this up on top and then slide it on i guess you could you can't put it on any other way so it won't go on any other way so it's not even though it's not keyed there is a little hole in there for some reason i don't know what the hell the hole's for but you can see <laughs> you can see here on the outside that little hole right there it goes on one way it doesn't seem like it will go on any other way unless you have it centered up well of course you know what let me see it oh it will literally go on when you pull the flange back but it will not attach itself so since it has five bearings in there right and then the five bearing holes here it's going to self-align itself anyway so you're going to want to line up that arrow of course to there you can't just push it on like the stock one you do have to pull the release to you and slide it on and then it clicks in. So that part is true and it does cycle off. Now, to compare it to QR adapter here, that one is different. That one is keyed, as you can see, uh, and it just slides on and it's on, right? Obviously, this is a long, a long adapter uh, setup here with this one. It, I would be better off 
putting this cube wheel from the uh, red extension here directly. I would be better off taking off uh, this here and then uh, just directly mounting mounting it to to the uh, to the cube bracket here, and then just yeah. only use this one quick release, right? But I didn't because I was curious. How would it look? So that's how it looks. Looks like a bazooka. But that one does slide on really good. So if you do have a short arm little driver here, you could use this extension, for instance, the way I have it here. But yeah, that, that is how it looks, though. Curious how these all look. This actually looked pretty involved on there. Uh, I think I will remove this BG quick release and uh, just mount it directly to, to the uh, actual hub itself, blue hub itself, instead of using this quick release wedge to be directly mounted. But I did it like this because, well, I was lazy. But really, the main reason is is that I wanted to be able to hot swap this off to all my other wheels. So my Sim Magic Alpha U and my Aki Force. Although I don't see myself using my Aki Force anymore, but uh, at least my Sim Magic U I can hot swap off. But although I am so happy with the <clears throat> with the actual uh, Sim Magic GT Neo, I don't really see myself ever using this one either. So I'll just switch it off there. Anyway, fit for thought. There you go. That is it for the driving impression, or I mean, not driving impressions, but for the actual hookup and how it looks here, the unboxing here and how it feels. As far as uh, compatible, or as far as how it actually feels in the hands, pretty nice. I'll turn this on again. I'm going to put it in uh, PC mode, center on up. All right. And it keeps all your stuff. So I had Forza Horizon 5 on there. Let me see. I'm going to go to Motorsports. Go from there. All right, so I want to look at the settings here. This is actually looking at Forza Motorsport 8. I just threw it up because I was driving this particular car last night with my Sim Magic set up here. And I wanted to see if it actually detects everything. So I have, as long as you have everything plugged into the wheelbase, meaning that you have your pedals plugged in, your shifter, if you have the shifter plugged in, and the, uh, yeah, that's it. You have the, the wheelbase, of course, plugged directly into your PC, and your shifter and pedals plugged in the back of the wheelbase. Everything will be recognized as normal, and even though this is an Xbox wheel, this works on PC, obviously, as well. But I noticed that my inputs are all working, right? I don't know which one is yes. There's that one. <laughs> but I can switch on over, and it's because, I mean, you go over here to inputs. You can see here, you have Logitech G Pro Max. Make sure this is on my yes. Uh, G Pro Max here, and uh, so that's interesting. As long as you put it on there, everything's plugged in, everything's mapped for you, it's easy peasy, which is really nice. You will notice actually, uh, if you don't know this yet about the Forza Motorsports 8, is it come over to advanced input, acceleration dead zone, it's five, I don't like that. That is zero, I don't know why that changed. Clutch, zero, handbrake, handbrake dead zone. Huh? There's my, sh my shifter works too, actually, now that I, I grab my shifter there. Uh, as if I'm I'm switching, my shifter is working just like my paddle shifters are, right? So I grab the shifter and push forward backwards. So that's working the same as well. Again, I know you can't see it on it's off screen, but what I wanted to get to was True Force is on here. So you can turn True Force on or off, obviously. All the settings here as well. These are all at 100. I just played with it a little bit. They're way too too much. I think think maybe engine put it down to 70 and keep it on tires. Rumble strips and collisions, maybe collisions around around 70 as well. Let's see how that goes. But I mainly want to fill the tires on the road and the rumble strips. Now I have a D-Box system, so I really don't need any of True Force on here, but I'll check it out while I'm here. But anyway, everything maps up just nicely here. So let's just go for a drive so you can see the LEDs uh, work in here real quick before I close out this quick look and unbox in here. So I'll use this car. I don't know what track I'm at here. Turn down my volume. I think getting volume going. Bad. Come on, people. Let's keep it going. So it flashes when your LEDs are hitting red line. That's nice looking. It's got this uh, rainbow effect. If you remember when uh, the rainbow effect for LEDs was popular on your PC, that's the effect it has on here. It looks fine. Oh, I missed my handbrake. I don't have a handbrake. As far as what I feel here, I don't really like the true force on this bigger game. It's pretty effective. I mean, I feel it. It's, uh, it's too intense. It really vibrates this light rim a lot. But I'll do a review on that. I'm actually doing a video last night on my just a heads up versus the Logitech Pro on on this particular day. Blows up steering wheel just fine. Everything's working great. 11 meters of force. The wheel is what it is. There's uh, that's the handbrake right there. 
I don't know which button that's left or left and right. Of course, back. That's pause. There we go. Changing cameras. Mountain shifters actually feel really nice, actually. Uh, nice and positive clicks. I think that's about it. So that gives you a good quick look here. I uh, hope you enjoyed this unboxing here of the Logitech Pro, the RS track wheel itself, the assembly of it. Uh, and then, of course, a look at the other steering wheel options that you can use as well if you use your QR system. And then, of course, a little bit of in-game play so you can see there are PM gauge. The wheel form fun function and all that feels really nice. The paddle shifters are very clicky. A nice positive uh, feedback to, uh, to myself, rather. So that feels nice in the hand. So I am enjoying that. Just feels nice. It feels really good. Buttons are nice and clicky. They seem to work just fine. They're buttons. <laughs> I don't like that this isn't a, uh, a seven-way funky, funky switch. It's just a four-way, which is typical of the stock Logitech rim itself. But yeah, I'll go ahead and play this on, on the Xbox and the PlayStation uh, 5 as well and let you know. But so far, pretty good. All right, stay tuned for more. We'll see you on track. I'm out.